Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to get into your word. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to discuss your word and, and really delve into the deep things of God. We ask that you would open our hearts and open our minds to hear what you have to say. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, the video that Mike sent me got me to thinking about all the stuff that guy was saying. And I went way deeper than that guy ever thought about doing, because I have like five pages. I don't know if I'm going to get through all five pages of it, but what he was really saying is that we got to be sold out for God. we got to really uh, turn our lives over to God. we got to have our minds made up to follow God, okay? I love the video. Go away. Uh, but I thought, you know, a lot of us, a lot of times we're waiting for how many of you been like you heard that uh end of that uh carrie job song where he's like and god captured me uh uh captured me by his love and you know and all this stuff which is true he does but when we're talking about our minds we're sitting around waiting for god to captivate us captivate my mind god make my mind captive is it God's job? Nope. Or is it your job? It's my job. It's a constant, he's constantly in my mind. Take so watch this. I'm going to read a couple definitions before we even get into scripture, okay? Captivate. To attract or hold the interest and attention of. To charm. Captive. A person who has been taken prisoner or an animal that has been confined, imprisoned, or confined, having no freedom to choose alternatives or to avoid danger. Capture, to take one's possessions and control by force. Hmm. Now I want you to Mom, go back here with me. Thank you. When you're captive, okay. you have no freedom Go to choose. Watch out now. Because I already know right now Martin Luther would not dig any doctrine to try to say we can't choose. Because Martin Luther's whole premise is freedom to choose. We have free will to accept the gift Break. of God. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Grace by faith. By my choice. Right. That was Martin Luther's whole premise. Right? Now watch this. And then it says, not only do I not have the freedom to choose alternatives, I don't even have the freedom to avoid something bad. Wow. What are you reading from? It's captive. So definition of the word captive. Oh, okay. Thank you, I said that when I started. I know, and I forgot. See, my here not that bad. So, I got a couple other words to go along with all this that I pinned at the bottom of my definitions. Imprisoned, to detain, to occupy, to invade, to conquer, or to seize. These all could be words that could be used for capture or captive, captivate. See what I mean? Mm. Captivate is more of a... When I'm captivated, I am completely uncontrolled by myself. I am now controlled by what I'm captivated by. So I've been put in prison... Yep. And I have been captured. But that's See what I mean? You that's can't have cute. one and not yeah, have I heard. Another. If you're captured, Go. you've been captured. Right. And, and you're a captive. This right. is why we take thoughts into captivity. Right. right. The verse you know I'm going to. <laughs> now, Go to your room. in thinking about all this, it came from one verse, and Mike's right, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 5. Can you draw a card? Yeah. Watch this. Oh, no, oh, who's got that? Mike, when you get it pulled up, I want you yeah. to read it. You're making a card? 10-5. 10-5. Yeah. 
Ten five. Yep. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience. Of Woo! Yes. Now watch this. The web. I'm gonna go back a verse. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Amen. But they are mighty, mighty to, the to the pulling down of strongholds. Yeah. <laughs> right? To yep. the pulling down of strongholds. And I've talked about this before. The stronghold is in where? My mind. Yep. The battle in my heart has already been won. Yeah. You understand that? Yes. The battle in my heart has already been won. Jesus has already taken root. He's already sitting on the throne. He's already made his home in my heart. That part's won. I've been changed, transformed, turned into a new creation. Right? Amen. Now, the battle I'm fighting now is in here. Why? Jesus said, so that I can believe. Every time he talks to me, he said, I'm doing this so that what? Because You'll believe. It's so great. Amen. Faith without Faith. Works, works is dead. Yeah. Now, watch this. The works that we need to do are necessarily always the works of my hands and my feet. It could be taking my thoughts captive. You see what I mean? Okay. Now, That's watch what this. what I had to do when I was sick. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go find that verse on my own real quick. I'm gonna walk through it. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna go through. This is a very small Bible. Got a big one behind me. Okay, you you will make it. All right, first five. You make it to trust. It says, <laughs> casting down imagination. First of all, we're pulling down strongholds. What is a stronghold? A place that you're held captive. Yep. You were held in a tower. A strong... Why do we say God is now my strong tower? He's now my refuge. Yep. You, you understand what I'm saying? I've been yep. brought into his protection now. Yep. Okay. But in his captivity, whom the sun sets free, is free indeed. In the world, when I'm trapped, I don't have no other option but to sin. In the world, I don't have any other option but to think that way. But now that I've been captivated by God, I've been set free so that I can choose yes, to live for Him. All right. Watch this. Ah, verse 5. Casting down imaginations. There we go in our mind already, right? And every high thing that exalts itself against the what? The knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now watch this. There's a couple things I wrote down on my notes. God, first, the first thing I noticed in this verse, God equipped us to take our thoughts captive. He made it. He made it where I can now. Because when I was in the world, and I was of the world, I was subject to the prince of this world. Yep. All set. Right? But now that I've been set free from the law of sin and death, I've been made alive in Christ. And he in me. Right? Now watch this. We're going to keep going. Number two. This means I'm responsible to capture my thoughts, and it's not necessarily God's job to do that. Yeah. No. I got another verse that I went along because I was like, hmm, yeah. let me see if I can find a pattern in scripture for this. Because I don't want to give you one verse and go, you can base your whole faith off this one verse. <laughs> you can bring all your thoughts into captivity because this one verse says so. Watch this. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. We're going to test a lot of Bible knowledge right now. Chapter 4, verse 8. Yeah, if I can find Philippians in this little thing. I've got to get used to flipping less, the less amount of pages. You know what I mean? Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Watch this. 
Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, if God just automatically changed my mind and captivates it for me, then I don't have to worry about thinking these things. It'll happen. But, but now I'm instructed by Paul that I need to think on these things. So the people in Philippi were obviously having difficulties focusing on the good things that God was doing. You see what I mean? I can relate. I have focus issues. <laughs> you know this. Undiagnosed ADD. I'm just telling you. I have ADOSO. What is that? Attention deficit. Oh, shiny object. <laughs> Not my picture. The note that I wrote here says Paul instructs them again to think on good things and again reinforces the fact that it is up to you to do this. You see what I mean? Now watch this. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 or 2. Shh. Mike, you ought to know this one by heart. I'm just telling you. You ought to know this one by heart. You should work back. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. It says, I beseech ye, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing, by the renewing of, your mind. of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will. will of God. Now watch this. I gotta get renewed where? In your mind. Now he's talking to saved I mean, folks. He's talking to people that know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They place their faith in, faith in Him, and He has come and dwelled in their hearts. He's probably talking to people that have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now watch this. The mind must be transformed in order to not conform. Ooh. Transform to not conform. A whole lot of people go, well, my life ain't got no better. Are you still conforming? Are you still conforming to what the world says you ought to live like? Are you still conforming to the world's wisdom? And if you go reading in this, you start talking about wisdom in Romans chapter 12, okay? We're not here to conform to worldly wisdom. We're here to be transformed by the renewing of our minds so that we can know the mind of Christ. Yes. You understand that? That's powerful. So if your life isn't changing the way you want it to, maybe you need to look in, in the mirror. Not in, Don't look at somebody else. Don't look through a window into somebody else's life. Okay? Don't look into, you know, the window of your kids' life. <laughs> look in the mirror. Because the mirror ain't going to show you somebody else. It's going to show you you. Yeah. Right? Because what's the Bible say, Mike? Work out your what? Own salvation. My own. I got to work out my own salvation. Yep. With fear and trembling. Right? Yep. So we got to look in the mirror and go, am I conforming to the world? Or am I really being transformed? You, you see what I mean? Am I thinking like Jesus would think, or am I thinking like, you know, Jim Bob Cooter down the road is thinking? Ooh, I'm just saying. It's it's there. That's what I had to do. You to you get well. I made it out. Now, I have a question. Is this all on me? Is it all on me to conform my mind? No. Well, God will help you probably. God, without God's empowering me, I'm not going to be able to anyway. Right. I'm not you understand? I'm Nothing that I can do in Christ can I do by myself. Right. 
So go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 23. I'm done, I'm done. Who moved Ephesians? <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. I actually want to start. Let me see. And 20. Actually, I'm going to start at 17, and y'all can just listen, because I'm going to get into it. It gets into all the stuff that I want to talk about, and then I can go over my notes. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in vanity of their mind, having the understanding, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, through the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart. Now watch this. Who being past, who being past feeling, have given themselves over to lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not learned. Watch. This. You have not learned Christ this way. If so, be that ye have heard him and been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, God, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that ye may put on the new man, which is after God, God created in righteousness, and true holiness. Now watch this. Wherefore put away lying speaking every man uh, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be be angry and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give a place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may give it to him that needs. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good and useful to edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Now watch this. There's a whole bunch in all of that. Okay? A whole bunch. First of all, he's talking about how I learned Christ. Now, if you're learning, what is the... What, how do you learn? Do you learn with your heart? Or do you learn with your you learn mind? With your, yeah. uh, learn yeah. by seeing, by doing. You learn. <laughs> with your brain. It, when you go to school, <laughs> do they just talk right to your hands and go, you brain, out. you don't have to remember any of this. Yeah. No. When we're teaching, we're teaching the mind. You understand? My heart has been sealed. But my learning needs to be at a different, at, from a different place. I can't be learning worldly things. I need to be learning Christ. Yeah. You understand? Not only that, he says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And then he says, the Holy Spirit has sealed you under the day of redemption. So in just this little bit, we're talking about, watch this. Do we do this alone? No, never. Do we have our Do we have our own part in all of this? Yes. In renewing my mind, I have the option to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and accept the teachings of Christ, or I have the ability to not learn that and choose not to receive it. Think about the word. What did Jesus say? A sower goes out and sows the word. He sowed some on fallow ground. He sowed some in uh, rocky ground, some in weedy ground, some on good ground. Now notice the first one. What did he say? He said, these are they that received it, but they didn't have no root. Notice that every one of them had to receive the word. Every time he started another one, he said, And these are they that received the word, but this happened. 
And these are they that receive the word, and that happened. And the very last one he says, and these are they that received the word gladly and received it, and they yielded 30, 60, and 100 fold, right? The first thing that you got to understand is you receiving the learning from God that you need is up to you. You have to receive it or reject it. And most of us will go, well, as soon as we hit a spot that's uncomfortable, and we go, does God really want me to do that? We'll find some way around it. You know what I mean? We'll, well, at least there's grace, you know. Right? How many times have you heard that? Right? How many times have you said that and then went, man, I'm a hypocrite. Right? No, I know there's grace for anything that I ever do. But I don't want to think about it beforehand and go, oh, there's grace. I'm going to go do this anyway. Right? I want to use grace the right way. Yeah. In true repentance and true humility to God and say, I, 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 I'm humiliated by my sin. Yeah. And I need you to forgive me. You see what I mean? Watch this. What? Thank you. Number two in Ephesians chapter four. Now it's talking about the born again experience. God's part. The Holy Spirit helps us in our born again life. Yes. Isn't that what he was sent for? Yep. He said, I'll send you another comfort that'll be just like me. And he'll teach you what? What? He'll what? He'll teach, teach you. you. He'll teach you. Well, I'm not even going to know the rest. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance. We're still talking about the mind. All, all things that I said. If you do not understand yet that the battleground is not out there, the yeah. battleground is in here, yeah. these verses should help clarify the fact yeah. that anything the devil does, watch, watch this. We just talked about David and Goliath. What was Goliath doing? He was going to the battle lines and he was taunting the enemy. Why? You ever heard of the expression, don't let them get in your head? Mm-hmm. That's what he was doing. Trying to get in David's head. Israel. No, he was doing yeah. that to Saul. He, he, yeah, all he right. was, was in Saul. their head already. They were totally psyched out of the battle. Mom, can you, you see what I mean? Baby and that's what the enemy wants to do with you in your everyday life. You start doing something real good, and he'll go, watch this. I'm going to mess up your whole house. <laughs> right? Something, something, something good starts happening, and then you get a call or a text from Mark saying, oh no, this just happened, and it just never ends, right? And then you get totally off of your focus that you had your faith on, and then you start worrying about things that you shouldn't worry about, right? Yeah. Because you got your mind off of that. Jesus, Peter, Peter walking on water, all you had to do was stay focused. Can have a sandwich? But he saw the wind and the waves and what? And was afraid. Right. No, yep. So immediately you can see the reaction in his mind when seeing the wind and the waves. Now watch it. Do you want more proof that God will help you with all of this? Go to 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. You don't even have to turn there because I'm about to quote it to you. Because God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. 2 Timothy 1, 7. Power, love, and sound mind. I don't, you know, I, I, it's okay to, I guess, to classify it as self-control, but that doesn't mean the same thing as the sound mind. You know, you know what I mean? Self-control don't automatically mean I got a sound mind. I might be self-controlled in one thing and completely out of control with no self-control in something else. Yeah. Right? Yep. But when we're talking about a sound mind, we're talking about I believe what God said no matter what. Yeah. You see what I mean? Yeah. And it's a whole different way of looking at it. And I, you know, that was one of the times when the NIV translated something that I was like, I really don't know if I like the way they said it there. I really like sound mind a lot better than self-control. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because self-control is a very vague statement. I can be self-controlled 
when it comes to money, and I can be completely out of control when it comes to eating. You know what I mean? And then all of a sudden, I'm not self-controlled. I don't want to be self-controlled anyway. Yeah, self-controlled. Self-controlled ends up <laughs> somewhere else that you know doesn't rhyme with heaven. <laughs> it. I want to be moved by the Spirit of God. The Bible says that we're to be led by the Spirit and to walk with the Spirit. Right? The Spirit of God was sent to give us, first of all, power, power to choose. I'm going through the three things that it says in Second Timothy one seven. Power to choose. He gives us the power to choose a different alternative. He gives us the power to choose to get out of the way of bad things. He gives us the power to take into captivity our thoughts that are coming up against the knowledge of Christ. Now watch this. Love. How many of you know if I have all wisdom, I have all knowledge, and I can speak all mysteries, if I don't have love, I don't have anything. Amen? Amen. So I'm not going to be able to walk out of life with Christ and bring into captivity any thoughts without the love of God. Because the love of God is absolutely above anything else, the most powerful force that God has. Even greater than his wrath is his love. Sound love. that he forgives us for everything we even haven't even done yet. Right. A sound mind. Now watch this. A sound mind. I was going to look up that definition, but I figured we had enough definitions already. I already read this to you, but in John chapter 14, verse 26, you can write it down. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He teaches us the heart is already changed at salvation. All teaching is for training your thoughts to think God's thoughts and to think God's way. Amen? Amen. Proof. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 6, or 10 through 16. We're almost done. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. What'd you say? First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. Watch this. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but we have received the Spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but with the Holy Ghost teaching, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges it's all right, things, so yet himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that we may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. What it's saying in all of that, is that we've received the Spirit of God so that we can know the mind of Christ. Did you see that? Yep. He even says it. Watch this. I'm going to go back just a little bit. He said, 
Now, we have received not a spirit of the world, but a spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given us by God. I don't know how much more plain you can get than that. We receive the spirit so that he can tell us all this. Right? All right. I got a couple more verses, and we're done. Oh, I got it. You got to go pee? I'll wait. Go back to Romans chapter 12. Uh, just to let y'all know. Come up. Um, that doesn't yeah. come up. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to read it out of this Bible this time. Uh, don't pull it, it's going to rape it. Romans chapter 12. After everything that we just talked about, about renewing our mind, if you look at the verses that we read in Romans chapter 12, where it's talking about being transformed by the renewing of our mind, if you read verse 3 through verse 21, he outlines what a life. Hey, hey. If you read all those verses, he outlines what a renewed mind life looks like. He shows you what this life in Christ looks like if your mind is renewed. See this? I'm going to read it. Oh, I told her I was going to wait. Hold on. Are they all gone? Apparently. Or at least there's not enough. Are there any cupcakes left? I'm not asking you, Mom. There's one in there. No, there's two. There's two. Yeah, there's two in your hand. One cupcake? I'm okay right now. Your dad might want a cupcake. No, I'm good. I got cookie balls at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> I got donuts from Donut Palace yesterday. Anyway, what I was saying while you were in there is Romans chapter 12, if you read, because we read verse 1 and 2, if you read verse 3 through verse 21, it explains to you what a life in Christ with a renewed mind looks like. Okay, and I'm going to read it out of the English Standard Version because it's a little more Americanly friendly to us who are not English speaking folks. You know, you don't speak English, right? You speak American. I've met English people, they don't talk like us. No. Some okay. Are, most of their words are the same, but some are different. They use them in a lot of different ways than we do. Yeah. Okay, verse 3. For by the grace that is given to me, I say to everyone among you that to not think of their self more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned him. For in one body we have many members, and the members all do not have the same function. So, we, so though many are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion with our faith, if service in our serving, if one who teaches in his teaching, one who has who exhorts in his exhortation, one who is who contributes in generosity 
and one who leads with zeal, and the one who does acts of mercy do it cheerfully. Watch this. Let us love genuinely, abhor with that which is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor. I like how it says that. Outdo one another in showing honor. So I'm going to honor you. I'm gonna, it's going to be a competition of how much I can honor you above myself. Right? Mm-hmm. Watch this. Do not be slothful in zeal. Be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Con- uh, contribute to the needs of the saints and seek to show hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Notice how he says that. He says, bless those that curse you. And then he reinforces it. He says, bless them. Don't curse them. Right? Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Oh. Oh. Oh, that means nobody's. Better you're not, you're not too good for anybody. Yeah. Right? Never be wise in your own sight. Repeat, repay no evil for evil, but give thought to what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. Be con- uh, to to the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For by so doing, you will heat burning coals upon his head. Do not oh, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Now, in all of that saying, what's he really saying? He's talking about we have to think about our life in Christ completely different than the world thinks. So when somebody hurts you, the worldly response, what is it? Flash out. You hurt them back. Yep. Right? In Christ, if somebody hurts me, my response is love. My response is I'm still going to honor you. I'm still going to bless you. I'm still going to live in peace with you. See what I mean? That should be that. Huh? We have to tell them that. If you feel convicted too. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, my mentality of how I live my life has to be changed. My mind, I can't say my heart's living for God, but I can't do this. My heart's living for God, but, you know, I still think about this like this. You know what I mean? Now, there's lots of things that we consider sin that aren't necessarily in God's law book of sin. You know what I mean? I remember there was time and time again over uh, me me and her arguing about me smoking. Have we ever argued about me smoking? I don't smoke no more. But when I did... The argument that a lot of people give at church is, oh, you're destroying the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right? That's the first thing people bring up. You're destroying the temple of the Holy Spirit. Do you know how many things that we consume every day that are just as toxic? Do you realize that sweet and low is more toxic than cigarettes? Yep, I do. That's why I don't need it. Sweet and low causes more cancer. Sweet, sweet and low causes more cancer every year than cigarette stuff. But we don't talk about that because we haven't developed some kind of worldly phobia. About it. You see what I mean? Jesus said something that I still hold on to this day. Now, I don't smoke for two reasons. Okay? My wife doesn't like it. And my own personal feeling is that I don't need to do it. It's not beneficial to me. 
It does hurt my lung. But I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon of everybody that crucifies everybody that smokes like right they're giving everybody an answer. The facts aren't there. You want to know the real facts about cigarette smoke? Less than 1%. Less than 1% of anybody that smokes will ever get an answer. It doesn't spoil your lungs. I don't believe that. Yeah. I've done the math. I looked up the American Statistics of Cancer Society, and I did the math. By the population of the United States, the year that I looked up, 44,000 people had cancer <laughs> from smoking. But as a population of the United States, it was less than 1% of the population that smoked. That just in that year, though. In just in that year. But the point is, that same year, the statistics for, for people who are over eight and develop different kind of cancers was 17 times more than that. Who developed heart cancer or other diseases from overeating, from eating things that aren't good for them, saturated fats. But we don't get on those when people are doing it. You see what I mean? Fresh fruits and vegetables that are organic. Don't get me wrong. I'm not defending cigarette smokers. Okay? Don't, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. What I'm saying is we don't look at people who overeat and go, you're going to hell because you eat, eat too much. But we do that with people that smoke. Some people don't that with people Right, right. Right, but I mean, if you. Main, mainstream Christianity has not done that. Mainstream Christianity. Let's just take the Pentecostal movement as a whole. And I'll take one Pentecostal church that I know who has lots of obese people that talk really bad about smoking but don't think any differently about overeating or treating my family a certain way or doing this a certain way because smoking although is bad for my body Jesus said one thing and this is what I stand on when I talk about what I eat it's not what goes in a man that defiles him it's what comes out of a man that defiles him you see what I mean yeah. Now, I don't think smoking is good for you, and I'm not standing up for smoking, okay? Smoking is not good for you. It hurts your lungs. It's not good. Now, the lie that we were told for years and years that if you, once you start smoking, you'll, you'll, that it does irreversible damage to your lungs. That's not true. That's not true. Once a person quits smoking, within two to three years, their lungs are almost exactly the same. Unless they develop cancer, unless they develop cancer in that time, their lungs are the same as they were before. God made our bodies great. Our bones regenerate, our liver regenerates, and our lungs can regenerate. Right. Well, the, the, myth, the, the myth for a long time was brain cells don't regenerate. <laughs> but they do. But they do. Or we would die like two months after birth. Because cells don't live that long. Some cells in your body <laughs> regenerate every three days. Your skin cells regenerate every day. You have skin falling off and skin growing. Right? Now, I'm sorry I got off on this this tangent, okay? <laughs> because what I really meant to say in all of this is that our mind has to be changed about the things that we're doing. Okay? about the things that we're saying and about how we're treating people. You know what yeah. I mean? I didn't quit smoking until my mind was changed on smoking. And that's where I was really going with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Anytime I ever got in shape in my life was when I made my mind up to. You see what I mean? Anytime, what God wants above anything else in our life is for us to live intentionally. You know what I mean? Yeah. Purposely for Purpose. Him. What was that book that was out years ago? A Purpose Driven Life. How many of us read that book? I read the book. Did you ever read that book? No. Nope. You didn't go read the book. It's great. 
It's a wonderful book. Read, read some of it. A purpose driven life. You have to have a purpose in your life. And that's the whole premise of the purpose driven life movement was to get us to understand that God has a place for us and we need to find it and we need to do that. Right? But you're never going to do that until you make your mind up about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's just like your life in Christ is there there's things that you want to change and you're like, well I don't you know, I don't necessarily, you know, do this thing the right way. I don't necessarily we all mess up. But we need to change our mind about how we're doing it. You know what I mean? The only way I'm gonna get over a certain sin is not to pray it away. And not ask God to take it away. Now, when we talk about sin, I'm talking about a habit. Not necessarily sin. Something that you're not proud of. Something that you think, well, I don't think God will like that. You see what I mean? Like smoking. You're not going to overcome that until you get change of mind about it. Until you see it like David saw Goliath, it's still going to defeat you. You see what I mean? Yep. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. And I'm done. I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. I know my thoughts that I think towards you. What was the verse this again? Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For, Mama needs a fidget spinner. <laughs> but it starts out. It starts out, I know oh. <laughs> I know my thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts to give you a hope and a future. So our thoughts, we and I wrote it down. Oh, right here. Imitate God in your thoughts. What does that mean? I've got to know my thoughts that I think towards that. And they gotta be thoughts of hope and a future. Give me a hug. Yeah, you're, you're not getting away that easy. <laughs> I love you. Aren't you off work? Back on the street. Oh, it was Oh, it's Friday today. You gotta work tonight, and then you're no. <laughs> I text you that just to be silly. Well, quit messing with me. He <laughs> told me what he was doing to you. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't mean anything when I text that to you. I'm just being goofy. Okay. Anyway, our thought process needs to change. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Baby dummy. Becky, we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. Kristen. Father God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the blessings that you've given us. Lord, I pray that you would help us to keep our hearts and our minds focused on you. And Lord, help us through your spirit to take captivity every thought that we have, Lord, and every plan that we make and lay it down at your feet, Lord, so that it lines up with what you want for our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here, baby.